Hello there. By trying to stymie Brexit, the House of Lords yesterday has put itself firmly in the crosshairs of a public that is waking up to their antics. It does not matter how the peers that voted for those amendments to the EU withdrawal bill try and dress it up. They are not scrutinising the bill to make it work better. They are simply playing Remain politics. They voted by a whopping 348 to 225 to force the government to enable the country to stay in a customs union with the EU. 24 of those 348 peers that rebelled against the government were Tories like Lord Heseltine and Lord Lansley. On the other side, the former Conservative Chancellor Lord Lawson called the offending amendments a political argument dressed up as a trade argument that amounted to a wrecking amendment. And Lord Forsyth said it was a plot by Remainers in this House, who are the majority, who refuse to accept the verdict of the British people. And I believe they are playing with fire. UKIP leader Gerard Batten, enraged by the stunts of these Lords, said, The vote by the House of Lords to remain in the Customs Union is a clear betrayal of the 17.4 million people who voted leave. Those people did not vote to be half in, half out of the EU. The Commons must reject the Kerr Amendment or put itself in opposition to the people. Lord Kerr was the man who drafted Article 50 in such a way that EU exit can be delayed, impeded and overturned. Acting true to form, he is now trying to carry it through to its purpose. UKIP will continue to fight for a complete and clean exit from the EU. Now the Lords know that this could all be thrown out when it goes back to the Commons, but this is a game of psychology. They are sending out the message that they dare to defy the wishes of the majority of the people and are hoping to give a boost to the many, many Remainers in the Commons to follow suit. And on cue, up pops a motion tabled by 10 select committee chairs that will force a vote in the House of Commons on keeping the UK tied into the EU via a customs union. The Conservatives Bob Neill, Nicky Morgan and Sarah Wollaston are among the signatories to the motion which urges the government to include as an objective in negotiations the establishment of an effective customs union reports The Guardian. These anti-Brexit peers are also hoping to bolster the Remain campaigns outside of Westminster, such as The People's Vote, to get them more vocal and active. Be in absolutely no doubt, the House of Lords is attempting to subvert democracy. Apart from the few remaining hereditary peers, the rest are supposedly appointed experts. They will all then be acutely aware that keeping the UK in a customs union with the EU places the country in a position of vassal state servitude to that bloc. They know exactly what they are voting for. The fact that they are prepared to do that tells me that their allegiance is to the blue flag with gold stars and that they would rather be singing Ode to Joy than waving the Union flag and singing the UK national anthem. But worse than that, they are all aware of the grand superstate ambitions of the European Union. They know it wants to control our taxes, our armed forces, our foreign policy, our borders via the Schengen Agreement and our money via Euro membership. They know all of this, yet lies by omission by never helping to make this clear to the public, but just wanting to, for us to stay shackled to it. They want us to stay shackled to a so-called trading bloc that has built a military satellite system, is commissioning a laser weapon system and is planning an arterial transport network across the EU to carry heavy military equipment. The mind boggles. Let's dredge a bit deeper into the swamp, shall we? 
Brexiteers know that the EU is not only anti-democratic, it is also corrupt, having not signed off its documents properly for decades. But more importantly, the EU does not serve the interests of the UK, and the treatment of our fishing community is testament to that. And just because the EU calls one of its chambers a parliament doesn't make it a real democracy. And it is the EU Commission that proposes the laws, not the Parliament. And how many of you actually know the name of the UK Commissioner and what they do? And you did not vote for them, they were appointed. But it doesn't matter because all those on the EU Commission swear an oath to ignore the needs of their own country and work for the EU. That UK Commissioner does not work for us in any capacity. So we have an undemocratic EU being fully supported by a non-democratic House of Lords, as well as much of our civil service. Surely that tells you all you need to know about our so-called establishment and the Ramonas that support it. Those peers who voted for such a politically motivated amendment to this bill must surely understand that, outside of the red leather-seated Westminster bubble they occupy, all the rest of the country sees is a bunch of toffs appointed by other toffs, all indulging themselves in toffery, at our expense. The calls for the Lords to be abolished and replaced with a proper revising chamber of people elected under proportional representation can now only grow more numerous and more strident. So I've added my voice to that by signing a petition to give the electorate a referendum on the abolition of the House of Lords, to which a link can be found in the description box below. And should they continue to pursue this political gaming, those Lords could end up signing their own winding up document sooner than they think, especially as many on the Remain side also want to see the demise of the upper chamber. It has become evident that we have quietly had what the establishment calls good Europeans, foisted on us for many years in every walk of political life, from prospective parliamentary candidates to Whitehall mandarins, from EU appointees to elevation to the House of Lords. No wonder they are all so out of step with the referendum result, and one has to wonder how many extremely capable, true patriots were overlooked for these top jobs as a result of them not being deemed European enough. The House of Lords should be the first target in draining the country's EU-centric swamp, starting today. So please do sign the petition. So, please let us all know what you think by leaving a comment below. But also don't forget to grab the video link and share it across Facebook, Twitter and by email. Thanks for watching. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.